Welcome back to our LiveFX tutorial series. In this video, let's have a look at how to set up a chroma key with live controls in a green screen setup. Like in the previous video, we'll start by clicking the live setup button, this time using the green screen with background option. Next, we select our input channel. We have a couple of options here. LiveFX is also able to capture up to four NDI channels simultaneously. However, today we're going with our Decklink 8K Pro input channel 1. Let's set our composition to continuous, since right now we don't require it to have a specific length. And let's load our background image. As you can see, LiveFX supports a wide range of formats, including camera raw footage of any resolution and frame rate. For this video, we'll just go with an equi rectangular still. So let's also enable the corresponding option here. We'll save the camera tracking for another video and just hit create. Our live setup is now configured with a basic green screen comp with two separate layers. Select the layer named Kia to refine the color selection by either sampling various points in the image or by just drawing a rectangle over a representative area. The mat can be displayed for visual feedback and we can adjust various other parameters of the selected Kia. In the canvas menu we can adjust the shape and do adjustments for the garbage mask. If necessary, we could also insert new vertices into the shape and even dial in a softness for the shape for more advanced garbage masking. Now let's select the background layer. The settings for the 360 image position are located here in the EQ22D transformer menu. By changing those, we can determine which portion of the 360 background to put behind our mannequin here. What we now want to do is to remote control those parameters conveniently from an iPad. So let's go to the LiveFX menu and click on Live Links. In this case, let's select OSC Source. We created a basic Touch OSC UI with three controls for our iPad and we want to link those three controls to the LiveFX internal parameters which determine the field of view, pan position and blur of the background. To achieve this we enable OSC and set the appropriate port number that our iPad is sending the OSC messages to. The incoming messages are auto detected as soon as you use the controls on your device. So let's start with the field of view control. There we go. Next pan control and lastly the blur control. Done. Let's add these three to the list of known lifelinks. Back in the EQ2D Transformer menu, we'll flip all parameters into live mode via the button on the far right. And via the link button, we can now map the incoming OSC live links to the parameters here, starting with the yaw parameter of the 360 texture. Opening the live sources dropdown, we can choose the touch OSC pan message to remote control this parameter. However, if we now try it out, we'll realize that it behaves far too slow. But there's an easy fix for that. Simply set a new range for this lifelink, translating it from a range of 0 to 1 into a range of 0 to 360 degrees. And on to the field of view parameter. By the way, you cannot only open and close the animation editor via the animate button. You can also drag the animate button to the desired parameter in order to work on it. Like such. Now we'll map the corresponding touch OC control to this parameter and again set a dedicated range for it. That is much better. Let's close the lifelinks menu since we don't need it anymore. To mimic the focus we can use the default Gaussian blur in the fill mod menu for this layer. However, we can also do this with a dedicated plugin 
or one of the free matchbox shaders which in most cases run in real time. And of course, you are free to write your own matchbox shaders if you have specific requirements. In our case, let's use the Croc Lens Blur matchbox shader. This will create a more optical look than a simple blur filter. Double click to add to the selected layer. If we tweak the amount parameter, we can get an idea of what the effect looks like on the background. Now let's link our iPad blur control to this parameter. Activate the live animation for this plugin, drag the animate button onto the amount parameter, set the live source for it and define a custom range between 0 and 10. Nice. All controls are now set and we can remotely control the background using our Touch OSC interface on the iPad. Let's quickly refine the key a bit more to get rid of the noise next to the mannequin's face. Done. Disable the overlay to get rid of the canvas outline and now let's color correct everything. Each layer can be color graded separately. But of course, we can also create a recursive layer after the two existing ones in order to grade the comp as a whole. Let's adjust the grading to make the image look a little bit colder. By the way, LifeFX supports multiple color grading panels from Tangent and Avid that can even be individually mapped by the operator. Now that we have set up everything, we can take our iPad closer to the set and remote control our background to the DOP's liking. That's it for this episode, see you on the next one.